Well, thank you for taking the time to come on the show. So you do the Soccer Today podcast, follower of that show for a long time. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. It's so awesome. Uh, and let's start it off. We brought you on to talk a little about the CBA that we've been breaking down here. It, this has been just a developing story with uh, MLS now putting out another volley here recently. Basically, what, adding on another two years of something and trying to put everything into stasis? Yeah, essentially, um, it, the wording they used is a little uh, confusing. We should give credit to uh, to, to Yahoo who originally uh, broke the story that, that this was going out. But uh, yeah, they ba- basically they want to extend the same um, provisions that they they ran the second half of of well, I shouldn't say second half. Basically, the majority of the twenty uh, twenty season, uh, the COVID part of it after they renegotiated the force force majeure clause was invoked last year as people may know the clause that allows them to open up uh, something basically based on an act of god uh which, which we're all living in still COVID. Right? yeah exactly so so that um allowed them to sort of reopen the cba that they had agreed upon in, in january um and and work with the 95 percent uh, pay cut so five percent pay cut across the board 95 percent salary which everyone agrees is is uh, i think fair on the players' front, uh, they extended the CBA that they had negotiated in January an additional year last year through 2025. With this agreement that they're they're put on the players' plate, they want to extend it to 2027. Does, then that um, now so, that seems like it would concern players because that locks them into such a longer deal. Precisely, yeah. It, look, on the surface, if you're a fan, you look at this, you can go, "This doesn't seem like that big of a deal." They're getting 95 percent of their salary. Um, and what's what's two more years? And, and what I would say to that is you know, the whole idea of this is to try and build uh, towards 2026, of course, when the U.S. hosts with, with Canada and Mexico throwing in a little help right there. The, the whole idea is it's going to boost up everything. Rising tide rises all boats. And, and the players with the original uh, timelines would have been able, had the boat been rising, to sort of use that World Cup as leverage to perhaps get a better deal coming into 2026. So I can't think help but think that the uh, the owners know this and want to take that little bit of leverage they might have had away uh by making the cba go to 2027 now so it'd be through the 2027 season clearly so that's you know two full seasons after the world cup had happened so they'll know by that point whether it did have the type of boost that they needed and you know if it did then fine the, the players can get a little bit of benefit from it but if it didn't have as much as they want then the owners won't be stuck in so it is not not nothing what they're asking for the, the owners in this uh you know despite how they presented it in in their releases uh, earlier this week where it was kind of like oh we're gonna give the players the same thing they had last year so if they don't take it it's you know it's implied if they don't take it they're kind of being greedy so we'll, we'll see what the players react to that um but it is an offer on the table to play the 2021 season under well, normal is the wrong way to put it but under as normal as circumstances as you can, considering that we're still living in that uh, act of God that we talked about already. And you also said in your article, it seems like that the owners pretty much hold all the power cards here. I mean, these are billionaires, not necessarily uh, you know, negotiating with millionaires where it is in other leagues like ML- uh, what is it, MLB, NHL, NFL. It's more like thousandaires. Yeah, 100,000 years is what I, what I put it. But precisely, I mean, you look at... Um, you know, even the NHL, the NBA, the NBA, the NBA, Major League Baseball, we know they get huge numbers, but I'm saying like even hockey, they're billionaires, still, millionaires, billionaires still, right? Like it's nowhere near what these guys are. Like a good salary in MLS is 200000 which I'm not going to dismiss. I would kill for that. <laughs> you know, I don't make $200,000. I don't know what you make, but I'm guessing it's probably not that either, nope. right? We would likely be talking to each other It'd if that nice. was the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're also you know, we have a, a full career versus five or six years where, right. you know, we don't have to keep ourselves to the highest level of fitness as possible to compete at the highest level. Very so short there's lots of life. circumstances. Yeah. Lots of circumstances that, that sort of contribute to that. And, and what, with this pandemic happening, you know, with the short career already, the owners are asking them to take money away from them, take money off their plate, which it's not the owner's fault the pandemic clearly at least mm-hmm. i hope not that would be a story if it were um but and i blame mls for a lot of things but I'll, I'll i'll break give them a break there uh yeah they're they're asking for a sacrifice here and, and i think that we all agree i think most of us would agree that 
that the players probably should be partners in this, but the players for having talked to a few will tell you that they want to be exactly that. They want to be partners and they haven't really been equal partners at all at any point in the relationship. Uh, they've been employees and, and that's not how you grow a game together. Well, you also mentioned that, you know, these players don't necessarily have the longest shelf life. They need to be able to make money during the years that they're able to play. So, you know, four or five years. So how likely does that make a strike? I, you know what? It depends really on what kind of strike fund they have. I don't know if any if you or any of your listeners have ever been in a union before and ever been in the situation. I have. I am in a union. I'm in the Teamsters. Very, very good. Um, and I mean, I grew up in a union family and, and I have been in a union in the past. I'm not now, but I have been in the past and I have had a strike vote before. And I think any of us that have been in that situation know one of the biggest things when you go in to cast that boat is can I pay my rent? Can I feed my family? Can I feed myself? Absolutely. Uh, in the next, yeah. And, and that really is ultimately the same with these players. Now, you know, as I said, their, their salaries are pretty decent, a hell of a lot better than most union members. So they might be in a little better position than most uh, to certainly last that out. And, and as I also sort of suggested in, in uh, the 24th minute daily blog that I wrote today, uh, they, this might be the only, a good time politically. And you have to factor that in, in a sports strike, because you do have to, try and gain this the support of the fans uh to to help get some leverage that way that does help in a public sector like this Mm. Uh, not public sector literally i mean a sector that is in the public eye um you do need the public support and and right now where they'd be kind of invisible like no one outside of the hardcore is listening to something like this is really clamoring for the colorado rapids to play in march you know (laughs) yeah you mentioned that yeah, it, it, or fill in the blank. Like, I'm picking on Colorado a little here. I mean, you know even I mean? how much are Chicago Fire, uh, I mean, people in Chicago really clamoring for Chicago Fire outside of, what, the 6,000 to 10,000 people that, you know, paying attention, maybe 15, 18. But I, I, well, always, wonder, well, how, I always wonder what the Chicago, you know, Fire fan numbers are. Uh, I think, yeah, they. I remember when I was growing up, they used to talk about Blackhawks fans being there was exactly 20,000 in Chicago. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> And they all went to the stadium. So that's why they were successful that way. I don't know. Maybe it's changed now that they've won a couple of Stanley Cups since then. But Right. They had two million come out to the parade. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone looks parade. Anyway, I'm not a Blackhawks fan. So, um, What are you, Maple Leafs, by the way? Oh, my God. My hockey fandom. I'm not actually. uh, I'm not not a Leafs fan, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I live in the city. Um, It's hard. And I'm a huge Raptors fan. Raptors are my life. I enjoy that. But. Yeah, I, I, well, not so much this year, but anyway, that was a different podcast. Um, I, I actually, because I grew up outside of Toronto and I had a satellite dish growing up. This is way off topic. So I had in my pickup any team and for whatever reason, I gravitated towards the Washington Capitals as a kid. So I've been a Capitals fan since I was 10 years old. Were, did so the I Capitals had, change from something? Were they something else? No, no, they've always been the Capitals. Uh, they they won the Stanley Cup finally uh, in in twenty eighteen. Yes, so, congrats for Ovechkin yeah, and all that. Yeah, I did get to see that finally, and and it was more emotional than I thought it would be actually. But at any rate, um, moving back to the topic at hand here, um, all I was going to say with all of this preamble was that <laughs> that uh, even the stadium I'm looking at, man, like we get 20,000 out pretty regularly. Like there's no one clamoring for it until the summer. It's a summer sport. So they kind of have a little bit of leeway. Right. Good point. Well, uh, I guess, you know, let's start leaning into some of my other questions here. But before we do that, if everybody could take a moment to smash that like button and maybe even consider subscribing to Spitting Fire YT, it would be greatly appreciated as well. We got Dwayne's links in the description. Check him out on Soccer Today. Uh, greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to help fan the flames of Chicago Fire Soccer on YouTube. Greatly appreciate it. It does a lot. Every like and every comment, as, as always, feel the need to interject. Now or after that, we love reading your comments. 